Welcome to the instructional part of the video. You can get tabs and backing tracks if you go to my website, www.erichaugenguitar.com. For information about the sound tools I'm using today, go ahead and click on the description box underneath in your YouTube player. And for access to exclusive live streams, worksheets, and other quick tip video lessons, you can find me on Patreon slash Eric Haugen Guitar. Now to the lesson. All right, you know it. This is a lovely, simple song. Our basic structure is going to be E minor, back to D, and E minor. So let's see how I cop Bob's vocal melody. So our melody there is I'm on the zero of the D string. down a power chord and with my fingies I pop the B and the E and then notice I only do 0 0 2 starting on the A string because the principle of arranging is that you always if you well okay we'll say it's a principle you tend to make sure your, your chord is below your melody that's why I stop there. I don't do a full because it would trick your ear, and you'd think, yeah, that you have the whole thing. Melody four four two zero oh, on the D string. And I might grab a little third fret, a little blues note of that low E. Does it again? There's a piano fill. Hybrid picking. Yeah, this is all blues, really. This is all open position blues. I'm on the second fret there of the G. Gonna slide into the fourth fret while popping. The, uh, what is that? That's our fourth fret. Oh, sorry, that's our open of our high E. Get out of there, yeah. And then so back to our E minor still playing around with that fourth fret of the G coming down there's our D here comes a B chord I just do a power chord actually knowing me I probably do it two and four open G get that melody to connect and then I want to put in some kind of chimey harp like fill which yeah I love these little Bill Frizzell type things so I'm using 
pinky and um, middle finger, and there's a reason for this we'll get to in a second. Seven on the D. B is the next scale tone up, so open B. Five on the G. So that actually gives us but it sounds like you get that neat, you know, noir effect. And because I use it, these these fingers here, I could I could sneak that up and uh, create this little chord cluster, 12, 14, 10, um, which is, what is that? I guess that's, I could think of that. I guess that's an E lick, really, because that's like going, but again, yeah. That's cool. And then his little melody there. Back on that D string, five, five, oh, oh, two. And then, that's, I love this part. I mean, this whole record's a great record. That's G to A, and yes, I am hybrid picking that G. By the way, side note, I hate that note of the G, and many guitar players agree with me. It's too low and muddy. Just then it sounded kind of cool, but usually I hate it. So three, zero, zero. A power chord, O, two, two. And then, still playing around with that melody, which is really, you know, it's a Bob melody. Not that Bob doesn't always, you know, write beautiful, pretty melodies, but in this song it's basically talk singing, so there's not much actual melodic movement to it. Two, five, oh, two, and then I do the G, A up higher. Again, you know, just bar chord style, the upper parts of bar chords. Same kind of stuff. And then, yet again, I'm going to do a different, different G to A. Yeah, but you know, it's really the same notes, just playing around with my caged versions. There's a G, there's an A, so seven, no wait, nine, seven, six, starting on the D. Move it forward two frets, gives us our A. And then I was like, well, then I'm playing out blues up in my uh, fifth, not fifth position, seventh position. Huh out of this structure. And then, you know, then I'm starting to play around with the, the form. Still just playing around with that open position blues and some kind of cross-picking jangliness. By the way, side note, this fourth fret note is the Bermuda Triangle of guitar playing. I don't know why, Many, 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 many of my students avoid it. It's, it's, uh, I don't know why. It's like this note that we're like, no, it doesn't exist. But in key of G, key of, C, well, no, not key of C, it won't be good. Key of G, key of E minor, key of D, like many keys, that note is there. And yeah, don't forget about him or her or it. Because it gives you this great, um, Dissonance. There's our D. Go down again. And then I really just started getting loose with it. I might go up some inversions. Uh, let's see, just looking for like bluesy. There's a D, by the way. Just look for the, the easy things. There's a D, but I'm going to use open stuff. 11 and 10, back it up to 7 and, no, 9 and 8. 7 and 7. Yeah, I guess I, I have a very global approach to seeing chords. I like to be able to see them just across the whole fretboard so I can just connect them. 
I think that covers it for now. I think what I'd like to talk about is how I do these things. Uh, let's not worry about why, because I don't really know either, just because I like to, really. But how? Step one, listen to the song, figure out the chords. If your ear's not that good yet, um, you can probably find the chords online and, you know, 80%, 90% of the time they'll be right. Um, once you can play along to the song with the chords, then you separately, you go over and you find the vocal melody. In this case, it's a Bob Dylan vocal melody that's kind of, it's kind of talky. Um, it's a very talk singy kind of song, so it actually makes it harder to find where the melody is. You know, and so you have to therefore have pretty good ear training skills, uh, know where your scales are. And by scales, I mean blue scale, minor scale, major scale. That's, to me, that's kind of the only three you're really going between. Once you've successfully found the melody close enough, the chord's close enough, then it's a game of like, there's the chord, where's the melody, interact with it, can I make them happen in the same place somehow? What's the next chord, where's the melody at that point? Can I get them to go together? And then the final step for me is when there's big gaps in the song, where nothing's really happening, melody's over, chord's just ringing out and there's nothing else to grab, well that's when I start to think about fills, blues fills, pentatonic fills, uh, you know, the, those interesting things that you might see me do sometimes with weird stretches and things ringing into each other, but that's really the last step. I hope that helps. Have fun.